Okay, so the next step is we're gonna add lights, some lighting to our fire system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight my flames to parent object, right click, and create a second subsystem. This one, and let's unlock my hidden inspector, my off-screen inspector, and select the light so I can copy it and lock it again. Okay, and we should label these, right? Now that we have two, this is going to be embers, and this is going to be light. And so the light is gonna have a duration of three seconds. It's gonna loop, and it's going to have a start lifetime of three seconds, meaning it's gonna be continuous, right? There's always gonna be a particle there. The start speed, and let's actually just turn off the emission for both of these, so we can have just our light by itself. The start speed is going to be zero. This is not gonna move. And the start size is going to be 0.1. So just unmoving tiny particles. The, the rest of the parameters we can leave the same. Now there's an interesting thing with the way the emission is handled here. The rate over time is, is gonna be zero. So we're not actually gonna emit any particles continuously. Instead, we're gonna use a burst. So if we hit the plus button, we can add bursts. The time is gonna be zero in our three second cycle, right? So at the beginning of our three second cycle, we are gonna spawn between one and one particles. And there it is. There's our guy. Our one particle, you can see he's moving around a little bit. Um, so we're gonna spawn one particle, uh, which is going to be our light. Uh, and so the shape, we're actually gonna turn off. So there's gonna be no shape. So he's always just gonna spawn right there. And you can see him there, lonely little guy. Um, and the we're gonna use, so this is one of the cool things about the new lights module, which we're gonna to get to in a moment, but is that it, in, it can be made to inherit the color of the particles, right? So we're gonna use color over lifetime, and I'm gonna use one of these lovely presets. This is just copied from the actual light. And if we look at it, it's just a solid orange gradient, which starts at orange, ends at the same orange, and just has a tiny, dip in the alpha in the middle. So it's fully opaque, fully opaque, and then just dips down to 189 in right near the middle, right? So what this is doing is it's just kind of gently fading in and out the intensity or the opacity of this orange color. And that is going to be inherited by our light. So our light is gonna match this color uh, and give it a nice look. So we can close the gradient editor, and now we can move on to the lights module. So this is a super simple system. Uh, we're gonna turn on lights, and what we need is we need actually a light prefab that's gonna be spawned. And so we actually have a light prefab which is called particles light. And let's see if I can remember where this is. It's in shared prefabs, here it is, particles light. Let's just take a quick look at that. So this is just a point light. It's a real time light, it has a range of four. The color is white and it's got no shadows and no anything else, right? So it's just a really simple light, slightly optimized by not having any shadows, right? Not casting any shadows. So it'll be a little more, a little cheaper to render. And it is on an empty game object and has been saved as a prefab, right? So now what we're gonna do on our light is we're going to assign that prefab here. And that prefab is now going to spawn every three seconds with our one particle. And so we're gonna set the ratio to one. We're gonna leave on random distribution. We're gonna use particle color, right? So we're gonna use particle color here and use particle color is gonna take the color of our one particle and use, use that for the color of our light, right? We're also going to use 
have size effects range enabled. That's not making a lot of difference right now. Although you could probably do something interesting if we had some random size, right? We could have the light, the range kind of pulsing. That could be cool. Um, but then importantly, we have alpha effects intensity, right? Which means that we're going to have this uh, sort of drifting, flickering change in the intensity of the lighting. Now, we've got a couple of multipliers here. We can multiply the range. In this case, we've got it multiplied by 15. Now you can see it's reaching the floor and you can see it affecting the floor there. Pulsing. And we also have the intensity cranked up to three, right? These are just multiplier values. You could set these in the light as well. Um, but if you had lots of them, right, you might want to set it here. Uh, and then the maximum lights, in this case, we're actually just spawning one. Uh, that's going to be our, our one light. And now we have our nice kind of breathing light effect, which is matching the color of our particle system. So now let's turn on emission for the embers and emission for the flames. And we've got this nice ball of fire complete with embers and some nice pulsing lighting, uh, which is affecting the scene. Now, I can think of lots of cool things that you could do with this light thing. My only advice would be, be a little cautious, right? Because it is gonna cost you in terms of performance, um, having lots of lights flying around, but you could do, you know, one of the examples uh, that was in a Unity blog post is fireworks, right? You've got fireworks going off in different colors and the light is flashing over this kind of bunch of rocks landscape. Um, you could do a lot of your magic spells, right? Are flashing through different colors and the light is picking up that color, right? A lot of really cool dynamic effects you could do. I would just, you know, warn you to make sure you keep an eye on your performance, right? Because anytime you're adding a lot of lights, it could get expensive. Um, notice, right? We're being very careful just to use one light here to keep it uh, under control. But some pretty cool stuff and I think opening up some really cool creative possibilities. Okay, so now we've got our whole compound effect with the three parts. What I'm going to do, notice this whole time I've been working in play mode, right? Which I don't think I would recommend as best practice, but just because of the nature of this system. Oh, and let's do a little Pepsi challenge, right? To compare this to our original effect. Let's see how close we got. We got the embers. We got the light. Not bad. Let's move our original down. We don't want the light to go through the floor, right? There we go, something like that. Pretty close. Cool. Okay. So because we want to save all this work that we've done in play mode, right? I am going to select my flames copy it, copy the game object, right? Because I'm now I'm getting the sub children object and all the components attached. In this case, there's just one, but we're copying everything, right? Right click, copy, exit play mode, and then paste that back into my scene, right? And I've got my, I've got everything and it's saved. So there you go, we can save our scene um, and we've got it, okay. So that was a long time to do one uh, compound particle system, but I hope that it was um, illustrative and entertaining. I'm gonna do one more, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to take a few questions. I know we're running long, but say la vie, right? Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, C. Strachan asks, can we add noise to alpha? Um, you... What I would do, you could, you can't, the noise is just for movement effects, but what you could do is make a gradient that has a kind of a noisy pattern in it. That wouldn't be super hard, right? Just do like a kind of random-ish bunch of value changes in a gradient and use that. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see if there's any other, you could, 
the ways to do that. Uh, you could do color over lifetime and random between two gradients. That would be even more. That's probably actually the best way to do it. That'll give you some noise-like effects. Absent ask questions, is max particles local to that system or global? It's local. It's just for this component. C Stracken says, you missed something on the fire. The light fade blinks every three seconds. The original does not. I think the original does that actually. But yeah, I'm not going to go back over it. But it does do that. Yeah, I agree. It's That's a little bit weird. And somebody suggested just make the cycle longer or just use a light with a script. You totally could. Um, you totally could. 